more is on the way. I need you guys to say it. I need you guys to believe it. I need you guys to feel it. And I need you guys to keep saying it to yourself because there are so many things we can say to ourselves and there are so many things that we do say to ourselves and not all of them are positive. Not all of them make us feel good. But when I say to myself, more is on the way, ask, believe, receive and know that more is on the way. It makes me feel good. So I feel like everyone can say that knowing that they want more. I feel like there is something that all of us want and I'm not even talking about just wanting more for more sake, things that we need. Sometimes we, it could be financial. You could be in a financially feeling un, like strained right now. Like, I need more money. Just believe, like, softly with your heart, softly believe that more is on its way. Maybe you need more. Maybe right now your body is yearning for more love. Maybe it's yearning for a companion. Maybe you're yearning for attention. Good attention, light attention. Just believe that more is on the way. You don't know where that love's going to come from. Sometimes the love doesn't come from a partner, say. It can come from a friend that gives you enough love that helps you grow and heal so that you can find the love that you need. More is on the way. It could be a job opportunity. It could be just something that you're looking for that is not... I feel like sometimes people think when we say more is on the way, it always come it always is around money it's not love friendship life opportunities experiences it could be so much so decide what that means for you and keep telling yourself that because why what I mean why not you can you can tell yourself a whole bunch of other stuff we can have a scarcity mindset and be like more is on the way oh but I find it so hard to make money or this is happening or that's happening Get silent, clear the mind, clear the body, clear the space. If you can, just try. I'm not telling anyone to do anything. I'm not I'm not out here preaching because it's not easy. I trust me, I understand. But do what you can. And if you if one thing if you're gonna do one thing that's gonna change your mindset and make you think more positive, tell yourself and believe that more is on the way. And with that. I'm going to start the intro so we can get into this podcast because I actually do have a few things that I want to talk about today. (laughs) So let's go. (laughs) Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the So Flippin' Extra podcast, a platform for me to express, explore and connect and be so flippin' extra. Why? I hear you guys ask. Well, babes, baby, because that's what brings me joy. And without further ado, let's get into the rest of the podcast so we can have a conversation because I feel like I'm, I feel like. I feel like I've got something decent to say. (laughs) Not that the rest of it's not decent, but still, let's go. (laughs) So let's just firstly address the elephant in the room. (laughs) My voice, sorry, it's given sexy. It's given deep and it's given husky. Why? I heard no one ask, but here's, here what? I'm going to tell you why. A cough tried to infect me it tried but I beat it and do you know what I'm gonna give you like the tea of how I beat it how I beat the cough but was left with this demure mindful and sexy voice basically right it was a couple days ago and the weather's shifted like you know not gonna talk negatively about the weather because it's looking sexy outside today I know it's a chill because I'm chilly in my house but the sun is shining the sky is clear it looks beautiful if I was on uh I don't know a Mediterranean island what's a Mediterranean island uh let's just say if I was in Malta and it looked like this this morning I'd be like oh oh my god but here in London (laughs) it's not giving the same but whatever it looks beautiful it's a full of mome anyways it's a couple days ago it's like top of the week like let's say Tuesday oh no it was Monday because I was like my voice my throat feels a little bit Mm. Um, this can't happen because tomorrow, which would have been Tuesday, I'm on this morning, this morning, daytime TV, yeah, modelling, and I don't want to feel sick. So, obviously, I'm affiliated with the Jamaicans because I'm an authentic Jamaican and all of that, right? And a couple months ago, um, one of my Jamaican pals said to me, basically, when you're getting sick, well, because I was getting sick, I was getting a a cough or a sore throat a couple months ago. He said, take dragon stout, 
yeah? So you take a dragon stout and you boil it, like you heat it up. So however you heat up what, your water, whatever, not, well, not in the kettle, but boil it. You boil it basically and you drink it warm and it will kick out your cough. <laughs> so I was like, bullshit, not going to lie. That's what I thought. That's what I thought, but I did it. I did it then. Woke up the next morning. Everything that was trying to come was not there. So, I was, so when it happened on Monday, I was like, right, head to the shop, get the dragon stout. Got the dragon stout, boiled it, took that baby, went to sleep, woke up the next morning and I felt so much better. Like the way the tickliness was in my throat, it wasn't there. Went to this morning, obviously nailed it. I nailed everything. I, I don't, but there's positive thinking and all of that. I mean, I did nail this morning though. And it was a great, had a great day. Um, went to lunch and had some birthday drinks with Narinda after, because her birthday is the day after mine. Anyways, anyways. And I felt amazing. But my throat was still like, <sighs> like if you asked me to like sing a little bit of Whitney Houston, and I will, it doesn't sound as good as it used to sound. So, you know, one loss, one gain, because I sound sexy. I'm not even going to lie. I actually can't wait to listen to this back. I hope you lot enjoy the way I sound. Um, and if you're only here because I sound so sexy, apologies, because next week's ain't going to sound like this, because I'm not trying to keep a, you know, I'm not trying to keep a sore throat feeling. Not that the feeling's there. Anyways, as well as taking Dragon Star, I do take oregano oil, which is great for your... Um, immune system I've been taking that for years so if you are someone who does suffer from low immune systems or low immunity um, contact me and I can send you the link to the oregano oil that I get um, it is a, it's just on Amazon but it's amazing I genuinely find it amazing like if I find myself coming down with something or feeling a little bit tickly and I haven't been taking it because I try and take it every day anyway which like I said I don't really get ill anyway but um, I will send you the link because I do actually think oregano oil is amazing. And there, the, so that is the secret, guys. That's the secret. On top of that, I ha it is the morning. I've It's 7.30. I've probably been awake since five, if I'm being honest. So it's not that I've just woken up. I just sound, I sound like a painting. <laughs> not a painting, a painting. So anyway, that's me. That's the elephant in the room. That elephant in the room took a long time. It's like giving long story short, not short. But anyway, let's go. <laughs> so in last week's episode, it was a conversation with Callie. Guys, if you haven't listened to that episode, I beg you go listen to that because it was so beautiful. It was so lovely speaking to my baby girl on how she was feeling before starting school the next, like the next day. I think it was she was starting the next day and um, she's had a great start to school. Not going to lie, her dad did get her her first attention because he got her to school late on Wednesday, but we move, innit? <laughs> uh, she's, yeah, so she's enjoying it. She's, I was, I want to say she's having fun, but every time I'm saying to her, so how was school? Cause she has been at her dad's this week. She's like, yeah, it was good. And I'm like, I want the tea. I want everything, but I don't know. There's no tea right now. So, but she's, she's promising me. I'm like, are you sure you're enjoying it? Cause she's not been with me. Um, and I'm just really trying to gauge her facial expression and her energy through FaceTime. So I've spoken to her every single day. And um, yeah, her her camera is a little bit pixelated. The, you know, the Wi-Fi is not firing. So yeah, I'm like staring down the camera like, are you sure you've had a good day? You have. I don't know, I just want the best with my babes, man. That's my baby girl, that's my baby. And do you know what it is as well? Sometimes we, our kids get into secondary school and we're like, right, you're big, you're big now. Like, cause whenever, when they're in year six, they're the top of the school. So they have this pressure of being the oldest in the school and being responsible. And then they go to year seven and now you're the baby again. And not only is my child one of the babies in the school, she's a baby in the school. Like she is end of July baby, the 30th of July. So some of them kids are like 11 months older than her. There are plenty of children that are 11 months older than her. And as much as I look at Callie and I see quite a mature girl, I have to remember, I don't know, like usually I see her as really mature, but it's part from she's actually still into toys and stuff. Like she's still into her little toys and then one minute she's out of it and then the next minute she's like, you know, she'll go around with her teddy bears and stuff. 
And I love that for her. Like, I don't try and be like, oh, you can't have that because you're a big girl now. Like, she went on, when she went on her school retreat in year five, and even she went on a retreat during summer, like a weekend retreat, I let her take her teddies because if that's what gives you comfort, you got girls on, fuck, sorry, you got girls on, what's it, Love Island with their teddies. I'm not going to tell my baby girl she can't take her teddy if that's her comfort. And um, if she wants to play, what when she likes to play with her Barbies and do whatever, she's my, she's very creative. So I don't take that away from her. And we shouldn't let our children play because they are growing up too quickly anyway. So when they, when they play, I love to see her play because it reminds me that she is still a girl. Like she's 11 years old. There's 11 year olds frigging doing TikTok dances and shaking their hips and putting their, hanging their tongue out of their mouth. And then there's some 11 year olds sitting on the, in the corner playing with dolls and toys. So, yeah, you choose which one you want. We see them and then they're, we're like, yeah, you're going to secondary school now. You've got to be mature. You've got to do this. And, you know, now they're travelling to school by themselves. And she today on, sorry, on Friday, she went to school by herself from her dad's. And then on Monday, she'll be going and coming by herself. But she's still a baby. This is the time for me when your children change. They go into year seven and they change. And... I'm very grateful. I've gone through it with Caden and it wasn't as bad as I've seen it be for other parents with boys. This is my baby girl. Don't fuck about with me. Don't fuck about my baby girl. That's all I'm saying. I don't know how to feel. Um, If I really deep it, I do feel really emotional because what's wrong and what's right? Like, am I doing the right thing? I don't know. Like, as a mother with boys, I just got to talk to you a lot. I just got to talk. (laughs) <laughs> talk and talk but with girls I've done it I've been there and this was hard and that was hard but I also don't want to tell you well this and this and this and this and this is hard because it might not be hard for you it might be easy for you you might be fine but I just want to know I just need her to know that whatever happens I'm there no matter what I'm here you are always going to come and talk to me please always come and talk to me I'm open and I just let her know that not like every day it's not every day like please come and talk to me Calais But I do really believe that Callie knows it, whatever, she can come and talk to me. One thing I want to share with you guys as well, especially if you have children that haven't started um, their periods and stuff yet, I would actually love for you guys to share with me how you introduce your children to, like, periods and stuff. During summer, I took her to get her first pack of pads. Um, We got the Lillette, so we went shopping together, she got her pads, and I created her, before she started school, no, she just had them in her drawer then, and then before she started school, I created her, her period pad, period bag, period pouch, so... I got her to do it. She put two pads in her bag. She put a new set of knickers in her bag and she put wipes in her bag and they are in her school bag. So she carries it to school with her. And um, yeah, just had that conversation with her. And then also like when we came back from buying the pads, I got her to put one on. So I showed her how it was done and I was like, right, you do it now. So imagine you've gone to school, you've noticed your period. You have to, or you have to change your pad. How would you do it? And yeah, this wasn't done for me. And this is not me putting my parent down for not doing it. You know, I done it for Callie because I remember how traumatic my first experience was on putting on a pad. Okay, I'm gonna let you guys know. I'm, you know, I share shit with you, innit? So I, my sister is four years older than me. And so I think I remember when she started her period and I was very like, wow, what's going on? But it wasn't spoken about to me. So my sister's out here putting on these nappy nappies in her knickers. I want I want in. What's going on? I want a bit of this. I don't know the time frames of like, did I do it straight away? But I just remember one day being in the bedroom, like there's the pack of period period pads. And I was like, I'm gonna try one on. So unwrapped it all and was like, boom, eh, put that shit on. I put that sticky shit on my Nunu. For context, Nunu is a vagina. Let's say I'm probably about 11 years old. So I am growing pubic hairs by this point. And um, yeah, that's what happened. And then I was like, oh, okay. Standing there with this sanitary towel stuck to my pubic hairs. And I'm like, I don't know if this is right. Obviously I'm just, I'm just in the bedroom by myself. <laughs> no one to talk to, no one to ask. I'm not supposed to be going through my sister's, you know, sanitary towels. My mum's probably going to, like, mash me up if I show her what I've done. 
and maybe she probably wouldn't have, she probably would have laughed, but I wasn't, I wasn't about to find out, so I'm like, okay, let's take this off now, what, it hurts, I'm now trying to peel away a sticky pad from my pubic hairs at the age of 11, like, ah, so I'm slow, I'm, I'm standing there, I'm sweating, I'm sweating, because how am I going to, in my head, I, all I can imagine is that I'd be thinking, how am I going to get this pad off my, off my pubic hairs? I probably wasn't thinking pubic hairs. How am I going to get this pad of my vagina? Definitely didn't call it a vagina, fanny. Anyway, so I'm like, oh, uh, slowly trying to peel it away and it hurts. So what did I do? I got scissors. I reached for the scissors and I had to cut it all away. Snip, 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 until I got that pad off my pubic hairs and after that I never I never touched the pad again until my period came I don't know probably by then my mum showed me how to do it again I can't remember I don't remember starting my period and having that conversation with my mum but more because of the incident that happened with the sticky pad on my vagina hairs I thought I need to make sure Callie is equipped (laughs) and that she just feels comfortable because that's one thing I remember is I just didn't feel comfortable having those conversations with my mum that's what I do remember and I want her to feel comfortable like to be like I'm in pain today mum because I remember how painful it was I leaked a lot and I leaked in silence because I was embarrassed that I leaked I would go to school and I would leak and thank goodness we had massive big thick kilts and thank goodness I went to a girls school for that reason and yeah like even my my friends that went to school with me they remember they're always like yeah we remember you leaked on the science chair I remember one time I got up from the science chair and there was blood all over the chair so um yeah if you have it if you have a little girl and she hasn't started her period yet and you haven't had that conversation it's cool have that conversation she'll thank you for it if not now (laughs) <laughs> definitely in a couple years <laughs> and from periods to menopause oh do you know what I'm so grateful for openness and I guess that's something that social media allows us to be is more open because there are conversations happening around things that have been happening for life that we're having now that we weren't having back in the days because what I'm learning about menopause is just wild like just women talking on their experiences so that we're not crazy maybe a little bit but we're not crazy there are certain changes happening in our bodies that actually make sense when you understand menopause and stuff when you understand what the menopause is and how it affects you and how it could affect you because I'm not saying that every effect that you have is down to the menopause I've got an episode a couple um that I'd done a couple of months back maybe I think it was like even October or November last year I'd done an episode talking about the menopause and just I had gone to an event that was called pause and really thinking oh my god are these things that are happening are they actually menopause then that I'm going through or sorry perimenopause as well so pre-menopausal before you get to actual menopause of you know every, everything luck off is perimenopause and so like I was talking to one lady yesterday online because I put something I can't remember what I actually even put but I put something about menopause and then she we were having a conversation about it and she was telling me her how it affects her she's 48 and she was saying that she's on HRT. And it's so funny because I've heard so much stuff about HRT that you shouldn't take HRT. But of recently, it's like you should. And then even this week, someone was saying that you should actually take HRT earlier because most women are taking it when they have, when they really are in, in the menopause, but you should be taking it earlier. So that instead of waiting for waiting for it to really affect you and really, you know, be having a a bad effect why not take it before prevention is better than cure right so yeah I learned that this week and it so it made me think is it maybe the time that I did go to my doctor I did have these conversations because it's like I, I it's interesting to know how the menopause and the ADHD of like battle with each other um and I say battle it might not be a battle but there are some of the symptoms of 
men of perimenopause, I'm like, but could that be ADHD? Or is it ADHD and it's menopause? Like, what, 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 what? So, yeah, like, the brain fog. I mean, I get, I've been been getting brain fog, so I'm going to say that's ADHD. Like, I don't know. Like, I can literally be on my phone doing something, have a thought, and seconds later forget what I was doing on my phone. Like, and to me, it definitely feels like it's getting worse. And it's not normal. There were times, like, you know, sometimes you'll be like, oh, yeah, 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 that's what I was doing. There were times that I've forgotten. I have to actually put the phone down. Or I'll just continue doing something else until it comes back to me. And that could, sometimes that's an hour later. Like, it it really is affecting me. And not only is it affecting me like that, it definitely is affecting my business because there's stuff that I'm just not getting done. Like, I'm just not doing it. I've forgotten. When I say I forgot, I forgot. Someone will message me and I see their message and I might I might read it. Sometimes I might not open it, but you know, you can, you know, you can preview some, at least some of it. So I know what the message is based on. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get back to them. Oh, oh, I've answered in my head, but I'm going to message later because I'm doing something. Message who later? Who even messaged me? It's, it's crazy, the forgetfulness. But for me, I feel like that's been happening for a long time anyway. But is it getting worse with, with the perimenopause? One thing I'm not dealing with is hot flushes. When I sleep, I sweat quite a lot. Um, and even if it's cold, I, I can sweat. So that could be a perimenopause, but not when you see these women like fanning during the day, like, oh, got a hot flush coming on. I don't have that. But my periods at the moment, oh, irregularity is real. It is real. Like there was one month, I, f- I swear I came on two weeks later and I'm like, what in the, what in the, am I possibly pregnant is going on? Because a- anytime something's not normal, I'm like, oh my God, am I pregnant? Obviously I'm not. Obviously I'm not. Have you seen my body? Stop it. No, I- okay. We're not going to talk about my body because we spoke about my body last week. But um, yeah, cool, whatever. So yeah, that is that. But I, I want to do another, con- I want to have another conversation about menopause. But I actually want to do that one where I speak with someone. So if you guys know anyone that you think could be good for me to speak to, that you think that they would be interested in, on having a conversation with me on the podcast to talk about menopause and to help school me and to help school all of you lot, definitely send, send them my way. And yeah, I'll pattern that up because I think it's, it's an important conversation. Like I said, my, my elders never had these conversations with me. I'm like, hang on a second. Ain't all of you all gone through this? And ain't no, and not one of you lot have spoken to me about it. Like, here's what's going to happen. Here's what's to expect. Like, none of you lot? Nah, man. We got we to gotta change that. We got to change that. So, because the stuff that I heard about at the pause event, I mean, the one that scared me the most was the dry vagina. Like, because I'm not just say, talking about dry vagina. The way they say dry vagina is like, like, like it's dry, like it dries and it's crackling and it's pain and sore, it's painful and sore. And I guess who really wants to share that information? Is that what it is? I don't know. So um, yeah, anyways, anyways, have I got anything else to say, guys? Hey, Siri, have I got anything else to talk about? There's nothing cool to talk about in your calendar. Okay, cool. I guess I got nothing else to talk about. So with that said, we're gonna end the podcast because it's been a nice conversation i've had a couple of topics that i've spoken about remember more is coming guys be positive think positive as much as you can i say as much as you can just do it guys because you can either think positive or you can think negative you have an option if things aren't working out for you just remember they're gonna get better i saw a clip today and the guy says what do you do when you can't do nothing but there's nothing you can do you do what you can. So if you're feeling that there's nothing you can do right now, just do what you can. Don't try and do more. Don't try and think more. Don't try and be more. Just calm down, sit and do what you can. And with that said, peace out, A town down. West side is the best side. Do I believe that? Mm, not really guys, but what I do believe is that wherever I'm at, the vibe's at. And the vibe's always gonna be vibing around here. More is coming. Do what you can. Everything ain't always peaches and cream, but the vibe is always vibing. I love you guys. Bye.